What's up, Vault Dwellers? Top Rank and New back with another video for Fallout 76. It's been a long time since I've done a video for Fallout 76. Uh, for the last, I don't know, week or so, I've been doing a few streams here and there. Coming back into the game, a lot has changed since I last did some videos, which was before the Wastelanders launch. So I'm going to be doing some videos about some updated content that's relevant to all the changes that have taken place inside Fallout 76. Starting with power armor locations, because some things have changed since I've last done those, and it's one of my more popular videos. But hey, to celebrate uh, my coming back to Fallout 76, I'm going to be doing a weapon giveaway. In fact, I'm going to be giving away this weapon right here, which is, as it turns out, now considered to be a legacy weapon. Today, I'm going to be giving away a quad Tesla rifle. Uh, the other two stats aren't really all that great, but this rifle is no longer available with the quad legendary perk on it. So this is an amazing weapon if you're doing a lot of events where people are already there and it's hard to get your hits in. Uh, this has a 60 ammo capacity on it, making it really easy to make sure that you're getting your hits on your enemies and you're getting some XP. So I'm going to be giving this away here in the next few days. Stick around to the end of the video to see what you need to do in order to win. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the content. Today we're talking about power armor locations. I'm going to be talking about power armor locations specifically in the forest region for this particular video. I'm going to be breaking this down into regions. So with that being said, the first place that I'm going to cover is going to be just to the east of the Morgantown. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, just to the east of <laughs> Vault 76, which is going to be the Morgantown train yard. So let's hop over there and see what we got going on. So again, Morgantown Train Yard, that's just east of Vault 76. This part really hasn't changed since Wastelanders or Steel Dawn or anything like that. So I'll be sure to note anytime there has been changes. But if you're brand new to the game, this is probably going to be the first location you're going to want to come across. This is, as we get into the Morgantown Train Station, we have a barn here and we have the train station here itself. And right on the tracks, we have this box car. Ooh, let's put this uh, Tesla to the test. There we go. I'm going to have some fun with this Tesla since we're going to be giving it away. I've loved this weapon for a long time. I feel like giving it away is going to be a, a great addition to the game. So inside this box car is where we come across our first power armor. Now, just a side note, I don't want to dwell too much on all these locations. But if you are brand new to the game and you're you're a low level, you probably won't be able to get into this power armor if it's got pieces on it. Right now we got T45. If we go to the, the transfer button, we can see that we have to be level 25 in order to get into this power armor. But if you just simply take off those two pieces from the chassis, you'll be able to get into the power armor chassis without those power armor pieces. There's no level requirement to get into the chassis itself. So if you're a brand new player, there's still a benefit for getting into a naked chassis. And that is, of course, you're going to have an increased, uh, increased carry rate, uh, carry, carry weight. I don't know. All right. You'll, you'll be able to carry more G's and you'll also have increased strength, which is going to help you do more melee damage as well. And seeing as how if you're brand new, you're probably going to struggle to find bullets. Melee is going to be your best friend. So I'm not going to dwell too much on power armor outside of that. Let me drop these pieces and we'll go to the next location. All right. So from the Morgantown train yard, we're going to continue heading east kind of towards the Mama Dolce. And this is the nice thing about this particular area. I considered starting at the north of the map and working my way south, but if you're a brand new player, this is probably the best place to grind till you get those full sets of power armors. Because if we go kind of southeast here, we're gonna run into another potential power armor spawn. Now these spawns don't always happen, and whether it's T60 or T45 or T51, is very random but ultimately as we go inside this barn there are going to be booby traps so watch out trigger that Ooh, watch they try to get us 
There's gonna be some mines and stuff in here as well. And once we go inside here, we got this power armor station. I'll see if I can put a uh, an image of the power armor that's reflected here. Uh, and then from here, we're gonna actually go at to uh, close to Mama Dolce's. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the basement of Mama Dolce's where we'll find another power Amazing. armor. Okay. Um, but before you can go into the basement, you have to have the manager's ID card. So let me show you how to get that real quick. We're gonna go to the second floor of the Mama Dolce's office here. And on the desk, no skill required on this Tesla. On the desk, you're gonna see this ID card, Mama Dolce's manager ID card. Go ahead and pick that up and that'll allow you to get into the, Oh, they broke my leg. That'll allow you to get into the basement of Mama Dolce's. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run back downstairs real quick and there's a hole in the wall where we can access this part here. There we are. And this guy here opens. Somebody's about to explode. Kill that rad roach. And this is where we're gonna use the ID card there. From there, we can actually enter the basement. All right, so while we're in Mama Dolce's basement, um, we can ignore those turrets. That's not important. There are a bunch of Liberator droids down here. Um, they're not really all that difficult to kill, but they do add up if uh, if you don't take them out. Like, they'll, they'll overwhelm you after a short period of time. Uh, we're actually looking for this room here in the basement. It's got a computer console. I hear those Liberators. There they are. I don't usually use a Tesla as my main weapon, but we're just having fun today. So what we need to do is access this computer terminal and you can see it does require hack level one. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna open this door for us. Now there might be an easier way to do this. You can see there's a card reader here. That manager card does not work here. And for the love of God, I cannot find the card that goes to this reader. So if you know where to find that card at, by all means, let me know down in the comments. Uh, but I haven't been able to locate it. So since I don't have that card, we're gonna use that terminal. But you can kind of see that uh, that power armor over there. So you do need at least uh, one perk point in hack in order to act, get access to this one. All right, so once you hack the computer terminal, you can just go to security door, open door, and voila. There, have ourselves some T-51B. All right, so the next location I'm gonna show you is actually gonna be some power, uh, not power, <laughs> Ranger, Raider power armor. Uh, and the good thing about that is Raider power armor can be as low as level 15. That is going to be the uh, the earliest that you're going to be able to equip a power armor frame that's actually got power armor pieces on it is at level 15. And only Raider power armor has that ability, to the best of my knowledge, uh, unless something's changed that I'm just not aware of. But by all means, if I say something that's incorrect, let me know down in the chat. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the top of the map at this point. We have a place called Crosshairs. From this point on, I'm going to be starting at the north and working my way down. The only reason why I started at Morgantown Train Yard is I strongly feel if you're a brand new player that the Morgantown Train Yard area is the best place to grind for power armor pieces. So the rest of this, we'll talk about some other locations and I'm going to point out some changes, especially for Raider power armor to get you into some power armor at level 15 if that's So let's go ahead and fast travel to the crosshair up north and see what we can come up with. All right, so we're up at north of the map. Let's go ahead and switch to my handmaid here. Uh, though it's almost broken, but it does a little bit better of a job killing anyways, so... This is going to require some hiking, but there's not a lot to this. There's only a handful of bad guys. I think they got some dogs. And I'm sorry for it being dark. Oh, there's the dogs. Thought there'd be at least one more. Okay, nonetheless, here we got our power armor. 
Now, this is going to be some Raider power armor, and as you can see here, this is actually level 15. Uh, the levels are going to be random when you spawn into these places. Uh, typically speaking, it's going to be closer to uh, a level that you're at, but if somebody's already visited the area, at the end of the day, it could be random. So this is where server hopping comes in handy. If you're looking to get your first piece of power armor pieces, this is level 15. I'm going to show you a few more places to get Raider power armor inside the forest as well. But what you can do is just pick your favorite spot, log in to a server, collect the pieces that are there, log out and log back into another server, and keep doing that until you got a full set. All right, so the next place we're going to go is uh, the Ehrenhold Homestead. This one does not have the Raider Power Armor, but the one after this is going to have some more Raider Power Armor. But let's go ahead and go to the Ehrenhold first, and we'll get to that point when we do. All right, so as we get to the Ehrenhold uh, farm here, just to the east of the main houses, we're going to go past this here real quick. Just to the east of these housings, there, there's going to be a barn. It's kind of hard to miss because it's in the middle of a, a field. And the barn has two silos next to it. I'm sorry, three silos. Here we go. One, two, and three. And inside the shed there is going to be another power armor set. Now the thing about this one, kill these bugs here. I might have to switch back to this Tesla just for funsies. All right, in this case... The door is already open and the power armor is gone. I'll throw an image here. But the thing about this door is uh, that it's often, well, it's usually closed. And in order to open it, you can't just pick the lock. You need a key. So the key is not too far away. Let me show you where that key is at. All right. So as we come out of the door here, uh, just almost straight east, is, you're going to see a, uh, a couple of hay bales here, followed by a tore up shack. Um, like it's a half shack <laughs> and inside that half shack we got this dude with his guitar and on him he's got a little letter as well as that shed key that you're looking for so if you come over here loot his body with that key you only have to loot it once once you have that key you can come in there uh, definitely so once you got it you got it all right, let's go see if we can find some more Raider power armor. In order to do this, we're going to head on over to the WV Lumber Co. in the top western part of the map. This part has changed since Wastelanders. It used to be filled with uh, super mutants, but nowadays it's more like, uh, what do they call it, free raiders or whatnot? I can't remember. We'll find out. All right, so as we log in here, or load in, uh, God, I can't remember. These guys are like free something. Uh, but this place has changed quite a bit since the Wastelanders update here. Um, so open the door here with this button. Um, of course, I got marsupial, so it doesn't matter. Uh, inside this, ooh, inside this barn is where we're heading here. Ooh, and we got ourselves some power armor right out of the gate here. Let's see. I'm gonna kill these guys real quick, and we'll talk about this power armor. Free radicals. There we go. I can never remember that. All right. So I killed enough of them. Again, this is going to be Raider power armor. Uh, and in this case, it's level 15 again. Okay. So the levels can be pretty random, but level 15 is often what I like to demonstrate, especially with the forest area, because when you're grinding the forest area, I'm going to assume that many of you are going to be lower level players. Uh, so this has changed. In the past, this was not Raider power armor. It was like just your T-series power armors. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone here knows, but there are two power armor stations here side by side, although I've only seen power armor load on this particular station. I've heard people say that they might load on two, but I've never seen it myself. So some more power uh, Raider power armor for you. Let's take a look. We're going to go to the next location here, uh, and that's going to take us quite a bit farther south. Um, there are some power armor stations at places like Black Mountain Ordnance Works, but I'm not going to really show those in these videos because you have to have a key to them, and the key is a very intricate like process. So we're not going to go through that. I'm going to show you more of the easier places to grind power armor. So as we look at the map, I think the next best place to go is actually going to be Point Pleasant. 
uh, which is the home of the Mothman Museum. Let's go check it out. All right, I probably didn't have to be on a server where everything was night, but Point Pleasant is another place that has changed quite a bit since the Wastelanders update uh, or Steel Dawn. This is now a cultist stronghold, which makes sense because the cultists worship the Mothman. Um, so yeah, quite a bit of a change as far as uh, as uh, aesthetics there. <laughs> I like these scorched heads that they put on here. The town was overran by scorch. So I guess the cultists came in and cleared out the town of the scorched and now it's their own. Anyways, I know of one power armor location here, but I'm told that there's actually two. We'll see what we can find here. The thing is, with the second location, I'm going to go to the second location first. So I guess that makes it the first location. Let's switch to a more effective weapon. As we go down this main street, we got this bridge here. Now, this first location, I've never seen a spawn, but maybe... Nope. <laughs> I'm told that a Raider Power Armor set can spawn here in this garage. I've done a lot of server hopping and looking around. I've never once seen power armor spawn here. But then again, sometimes you just have a lot of bad luck and that might just be what I'm experiencing right now. So if you've ever seen power armor spawn on this station, let me know down in the comments. I've never seen it myself. But let's go ahead and get out of this garage here. And we're actually gonna go to the top of the bridge for a place where I know that power armor does spawn here. So we got the, the bridge kind of in the, the, I guess, north side of the town. And if we cut through these buildings, I got marsupial, but I, I don't want to assume that everybody does here. So we'll take the longer routes. Um, on the rooftop, there's a little bit of platforming. Ah. And there's a lot of cultists here, by the way, so this might not be a bad place to farm. I don't know. A little bit of platforming here, nothing super complicated. Uh, these guys do throw Molokov cocktails, so watch out for that. And on this rooftop right here, of course, it doesn't want to spawn, but that's why I got photos. On this rooftop is where we're going to see some more T-Series power armor spawn. Uh, so this has been a spawn point for a long time. I'm just not sure about that location underneath the garage. But then again, sometimes you just have a lot of bad luck and you can go through 30 servers and not have the power armor spawn. All right, with that being said, let's continue on south to our next stop here. Um, the next location that I'm going to point out is we used to have some power armor that spawned at the Lewis and Sons farming supplies. Uh, that power armor no longer spawns there. It was inside the barn, but the barn is now closed off and it's an instance that you enter into. So no more power armor there. Let me just double check, make sure I'm not missing one. Not one that comes to mind. So our next power armor location is actually gonna be at the Nuka Cola plant. And just because these two places are really close, I'll show you what I'm talking about. In, in the past, this barn used to be open and inside was like a, a power armor set as well as, you know, bobblehead and magazines and whatnot. But now it's uh, it's changed, the barn is closed and you can actually enter into an instance uh, that does not have the, the power armor spawn. So uh, one less location for us to grind here, but nonetheless, we still got the Nuka-Cola plant. Um, and when we get into here, we on the back of the Nuka-Cola plant, we're here kind of center center west midwest whatever you want to call it still south of volt 76 so we're coming into the back of the plant uh this is the easiest entrance to get to the power armor spawn point here Pair this weapon so the entrance that we're looking for is going to be this one right here all right, so the last place that I'm going to show for the sake of this video is the Wade Airport. So this still, of course, is in the lower section of the forest. Um, I will say this. There are a couple of more power armor locations that do spawn throughout the forest that I'm not going to cover because they're a little too far off the beaten path. So they don't make a lot of sense to, uh, to farm. 
Uh, an example of this is I believe there's one at the basement of the Hornwright Industrial Headquarter, uh, Headquarters, Industrial Headquarters, um, which if you're following the storyline, uh, that's closer to, I, I would say, more like at least at the halfway mark of the storyline, maybe even farther than that by the time you get into the industrial headquarters. Uh, there is actually another one underneath the flat, uh, yeah, the Flatwoods Bridge, but it requires you to get a key um, from the um, this Toxic Valley, uh, from this different region. What, what valley is this? Now I forgot the name of this valley. Um, the Dump. <laughs> Uh, so I didn't want to cover that location because you do have to do quite a bit of a storyline just for that one. And there's also a power armor set at Black Mountain Ordnance, but you have to actually go through this. Call it a quest might be giving it too much of a benefit. You got to hop around the map a lot to find different clues in order to find keys that unlock the, the, the bunkers. Uh, so there's a lot of process there as well. Um, so I don't want to cover those like off the beaten path kind of locations, but at the Wade uh, Airport There are actually two power armor sets. Most people are probably only aware of one The second one in question is a Raider power armor set as well So I'll show you that but as we're at the Wade Airport here. We're on a dare I call it a landing strip It's all kinds of destroyed uh, on the north side of the airport, uh, we have a uh, bunker here. Hangar, I suppose, would be the correct term, where we have some T-Series power armor hanging out. So this is the one most people know about. But if we actually go to the south end of this landing pad, um, there is a truck that is often overlooked, and the truck can be opened Not loading yet there it is it's uh yeah see that um trailer i guess we'll call it the tractor trailer um this is booby trapped by the way there's like a plasma mine next to it so what you want to do is just kind of run past it boom <laughs> and then this does require some lock picking skills this is the lock pick number two which means you got to have some perk cards in order to be able to access it. Perk cards and apparently a little bit of skill, which I do not possess. But if we unlock this, we get to open it up and we have a second power armor set in here. And it is a Raider power armor set. In this case, it only has a helmet on it. But again, it's level 15, so <laughs> not bad. All right, so... Like I mentioned, there are some other locations throughout the forest region here. Um, there are also several locations that kind of border on the Toxic Valley uh, and the uh, the Great Divide here, the Savage Divide. Man, I can't believe I forgot the name of the um, It's not going to come to me right now. <laughs> I could Google it, but that's for another video. Uh, so yeah, there's some areas that kind of border these other regions. Um, but we'll get to those in later videos for uh, for the forest the regions that I pointed out are probably the most logical to grind so I might have missed one or two locations but that was probably because they were off the beaten path but by all means if you think you know of a great farming location for power armor in the forest let me know with that being said let's talk a little bit more about this quad Tesla giveaway um, that some of you might have stuck around for at this video. All right, so prior to me leaving Fallout 76 for about a year-long break, I bogarted a lot of great weapons. And this was... I wouldn't say that it's one of my best weapons ever, but it was a weapon that I've carried on me at all times because of its convenience, the Quad Tesla. Teslas usually only carry about 15 rounds, and if you got an automatic Tesla, you can burn through 15 rounds in no time flat, which is what makes this quad Tesla super awesome. It's one of the few weapons that truly benefit from the quad legendary perk. The thing about it is that this is now considered a legacy weapon in that you can no longer pick up a quad Tesla in the game. They no longer... So, you can still get them through, I don't know, giveaways like today. 
Uh, I got a lot of weapons in my inventory. I need to make space and I'm going to be giving away some great weapons as I start creating some more videos. So if you're interested in seeing if you can get your hands on the quad Tesla here, the other two legendary perks aren't all that great, but the quadruple ammo capacity is what makes it so wonderful. Um, so for PC players that are interested in this weapon, and you got to be on PC because we don't have cross platform. I know I play with an Xbox controller, but I'm actually on PC. Um, for those of you that are on PC and interested in this quad Tesla, what I want you to do is if you could for me, go down into the comments and just type in quad Tesla. Uh, anything along them lines. Quad Tesla rules. I want a quad Tesla. I'm not too picky. Uh, today is June 13th, 2021. I'm going to give everyone a few days so they have an opportunity to see if they want this weapon or not. So let's just say at the end of day, June 16th, 2021. Uh, is the cutoff period so on June 17th I'll do some RNG random number generators and we'll see who's gonna win from there uh, and of course in order for you to be able to pick this weapon up you do have to be able to meet me in game on Fallout 76 that's why you have to be a PC so again if you're interested in the Tesla quad Tesla inside the comments with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you guys hanging out with me while I create some of this new content and update my videos. We'll see you all next time.